Joseph says, my students are working on RF control um, lights for their GCSE uh, projects, but they're struggling to get them working. Now, they've chosen to use a uh, 433 megahertz transmitter and receiver module, um, and the chip they're, they're using is the HT122D and the HT12E. The, um, the, the, the DB in the decoder and the EB in the encoder. Um, does he have any sim simple suggestions um, for how the circuit might work? Well, what I attempt to do um, is do a quick block diagram of, of, of how it should all be connected together um, and, and what we need to think about with this. So basically, um, we're going to be looking at having some inputs here. And this is going to be in the form of some switches. That's going to go on to an encoder module. And the encoder module I'm just trying to get that uh, get that focused for you so you can see it. Um, the the encoder module that's the HT12. We then need to go into a transmitter that goes through the ether, receive that, and then decode it. And the decoder module, that one is the um, the HT one two two D. So that's the basic block diagram for for the, um, the, the the system. All we now need to do is just look at this in a little bit more detail. Now, for the encoder to work, it needs to have um, an eight bit number, and that basically encodes um, a unique. Uh, well, it, it, there's 256 combinations, um, but it's a fairly unique number so that it doesn't interfere uh, with other devices and it, 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 it will be a, a number that, that allows the receiver to know that, that the particular transmitter is the one it should correspond to. So the best way of dealing with that side of things um, is if you get the, the little dip switches, you can get a, a, an 8 pin, uh, a, a 16 pin dill dip switch um, which has got the, the, the eight little um, switches in and you can move those around and if we use those eight lines and we feed that into the encoder so that goes in and that's going in on the address lines A0 to A7 so that sets what that unique number is for that device we've then got um, four input switches um, and these are basically connected between uh, the, the device and ground. So if I just put, I'm just going to put one of those in, um, and then that's that's going down to to the volts. And those four switches, they go in on the um, data in lines um, eight to eleven. So A eight down to A eleven. So there's four of those sitting there, uh, all connected to ground. And when one of those switches is pressed, this unit will then um, encode a message, and we need to transmit that out. Um, now, there is a, uh, a couple of pins for um, oscillator, um, and we need to specify how that one works, um, and that's just by putting a resistor in. I think something like a, a 1 meg should do the job on that one. The final bit of the, um, the chip is the, 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 the output, um, so we get data out, and this needs to be fed into the transmitter module. Now there's a number of different transmitter modules available. Um, most of them are four pin devices. So that's going to sit here and they're going to have data in. They're going to have positive power, naught volts and the antenna connection. Uh, so that goes off to the antenna. This one comes down and we need to have a common ground on that and we need to have common power onto that. Now. The problem with this is that if we connect this up as it is at the moment, that's always going to be transmitting. And what we could really do with doing is being able to switch that power on and off. Now, the issue here is that if we are wanting to switch the power on and off, that we need to switch it on so that the transmitter is enabled and warmed up and ready to go before one of these switches um, is pressed. Now, I've had a quick read through the data sheet, and I can't quite work out exactly how they're, they're suggesting that should happen. So my starting point would be to suggest that we just leave that permanently powered up um, to start with, and once that's all working fine, um, that we could look at maybe putting a, a, a switch in here, um, probably replace that connection there um, with a, a PMP transistor, 
Um, but we then would want some some logic that said if one of these switches is pressed, then we need to to, to power that up. Now we will find is that when this encodes, it will um, send out multiple repeats. So there'll be a packet of data that comes across here, um, and it will send the data. Uh, lots of information encoded into that, it will wait a bit and then it will send more data um, and it will do that several times. So even if we miss the first one while the transmitter is warming up, um, then that wouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so we could do something where we're, we're, we're checking um, those, those, those signals and powering up the, the transmitter. The receiving side then is pretty much a mirror of the, um, the, the, the transmit side. Um, on here we have an aerial that connects so the data comes across there. It also needs power. And then this time we've got data out. The output data then goes into the decoder chip. And out of that, we can either drive some LEDs, uh, or if we want to drive something more useful, um, then we'll be able to, to do that. Um, so I think in the, the, the case of the, the, the um, project we were looking at was to, to drive lights. So instead of just driving straight into an LED, um, potentially we need to drive into a transistor to do that. Um, but that's the that's the basic block diagram and setup up um, of how all that works. Um, like I say, uh, Joseph, I'll, I'll ping you off an email with a, a little bit more detail on it, because although that has answered your question, um, I, you wouldn't be able to, to actually implement the, uh, the circuit from the information I've given you there. Um, but I don't, don't particularly want to go into that sort of level of detail right now. 